Good morning everyone. My name is Vijay Gupta and you are watching Biology Classes. So welcome to all of you in this lecture of Biology. Student, in this lecture, I will continue our chapter number 2 that is Sexual Reproduction in Flowering Plants, especially for my 12 students, BSc students and also for my NEET students. So in this lecture, I will discuss about the development of female gametophyte or the development of embryo sac and the process of development of female gametophyte is termed as the megasporogenesis. As we know that gynoecium is the female part of the flower. Gynoecium is present in the center most of the time and inside the gynoecium there are three main parts the stigma, style and the ovary. Inside the ovary ovules are produced and in the center of the ovule embryo sac is present. In my last video as I described about the structure of ovule and then I told you that in the center of the ovule there is an embryo sac which consists of total 7 cells and 8 nuclei. So the embryo sac consists of 7 cells and 8 nuclei and this 3 cells are termed as the antipodal cells which are found to look towards the chalaza pole. 2 cells lies in the center which are known as polar bodies 2 nuclei and in the lower region or in the micropylar end there are 2 synergids and 1 egg cell is present. So, thus you can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These are the 8 nuclei and in the center both the polar nuclei fuse together and converted into a single cell that is called central cell or the secondary nucleus. So, thus you can see there are 7 cells and 8 nuclei in the embryo sac. So, this is the embryo sac. Now, this embryo sac consists of total 7 cells and 8 nuclei. In this lecture, we will discuss how these 7 cells and 8 nuclei are produced inside the female gametophyte. First of all, I would like to explain the word female gametophyte. Female, we know that female part of the flower. Gametophyte, the plant which consists of gamete. Phyte means plant and gamete means male gamete or the female gamete. So, if the plant consists of female gamete or the female gamete forms on the plant, then it is termed as female gametophyte. So, in this lecture, we will discuss about the development of female gametophyte, which is also known as the embryo sac. So, how these 7 cells and 8 nuclei are produced inside the female gametophyte? We will discuss about this topic. So, first of all, to understand this topic clearly, I am going to make a diagram. You can also make a diagram with me. Then we will discuss about the topic of megasporogenesis. So students, our diagram is ready. Now I am going to explain the topic megasporogenesis. It is very important to know that what is megaspore. The female gametophyte is also known as megaspore. So the process of formation of megaspore is termed as the megasporogenesis. So you can say it is the development of female gametophyte or it is the development of embryo sac and also can say it is the development of megaspore or megasporogenesis. As I told you in my earlier videos that Female, sorry, male gamete is known as microspore and formation of microspore is termed as the microsporogenesis while the megaspore is referred as the female gamete. So, formation of female gamete or the megaspore is termed as the megasporogenesis. So, with the help of this diagram, I will explain about the megasporogenesis in detail. As we know that most of the part of ovule is known as nucellus. So, this is the ovule and inside the ovule, embryo sac will develop. So, this is the ovule, all these are ovules and inside the ovule most of the cells or the most of the part is known as nucellus. A single of cell of nucleus converted into archaeosporial cell. Actually, a single cell of nucellus becomes enlarged in size and converted into archaeosporial cell. This archaeosporial cell divides. Now, it's a simple division, simple mitosis division. So, this is the simple mitosis division. And with the help of this division, the archaeosporal cell divided into two cells. One cell formed towards the outside while one towards the inner side. The outer cell is termed as the primary parietal cell while the inner term is microsporogen microspor sorry, primary sporogenous cell. This primary parietal cell further divides. 
and to form two to four cells as I shown with red color but this primary sporogenous cell does not divide and convert it into megaspore mother cell which is a diploid cell diploid in nature means 2n after that this megaspore mother cell divides by meiosis division and with the help of meiosis division it produces four megaspore mother cells in the form of tetrad tetrad means group of four cells so these are the four megaspore mother cell which are formed by the meiosis division of megaspore mother cells so this was the single megaspore mother cell and now after the division there are four megaspore mother cells are produced which are formed in a tetrad which are found in the form of tetrad means group of four now in these four cells three cells degenerate three cells degenerate so these are the degenerating megaspore while one while one single cell is converted into the functional megaspore mother cell this is the functional megaspore cell and these three cells are the degenerating megaspore mother cell finally this functional megaspore mother cell will produce seven cells and eight nuclei inside the embryo so so what is the procedure this functional megaspore mother cell again divide by mitosis division and to form two cells in which one cell moves towards the upper end or the chalaza pole while another moves towards the micropyle pole these are two ends of ovule which i have described in my last video that there are two parts of ovule two uh, poles of uh, ovule one is the micropyle pole and another is the chalaza pole so this one is the micropyle pole sorry chalaza pole and this one is the micropyle pole at chalaza pole antipodal cells are present you can easily identify it and at micropyle pole there are two synergists and one x cell is present now finally these two cells one moves towards the chalaza pole another towards the micropyle pole these are the two nuclei now after that these two nuclei further divides twice two times division by the mitosis division and to form eight nuclei total eight nuclei suppose that one nuclei present at the chalaza pole one at the micropyle pole this nuclei when when it divides first time then it will produce two nuclei second time it will produce four nuclei thus four nuclei will form towards the chalaza pole while four nuclei form towards the micropyle pole out of these four one nuclei moves in the center and out of these four one nuclei also moves in the center thus in the center two nuclei are present which are termed as the polar bodies while remaining three nuclei at the chalaza pole converted into antipodal cells so these are three antipodal cells present at the chalaza pole now in the at the micropylar pole two cells will convert it into synergids and one is x cell so thus there are total eight nuclei inside the embryo sac as you can see three towards the chalaza pole known as the antipodal cells two in the center known as the polar bodies one uh, sorry three uh, are present at the micropyle pole in which one is the x cell while two are the synergids these all cells are these are all nuclei are haploid in nature but after some time these polar bodies or these two haploid polar bodies fuse together and converted into secondary nucleus or you can say central cell which is diploid in nature why diploid in nature because these two polar bodies are haploid and when two haploid cells will fuse with each other then it will convert into the secondary nucleus that is the diploid cell so thus you can see there are total seven cells and eight nuclei three cells three cells and one cell three plus three plus one is equal to seven but eight nuclei are there because there are two polar bodies so towards the chalaza pole in the final structure of embryo sac you can say three cells of antipodal cells known as antipodal cells present at the chalaza pole one cell one diploid cell is in the center which consists of two nuclei and by the fusion of these two polar bodies and at the micropyle pole there are three cells which are collectively known as egg apparatus in which two are synergids and one is the x cell both are haploid in nature now one more thing uh, you can see these are some filamentous structure which are termed as the filiform apparatus these filiform apparatus helps in the process of fertilization i will describe the function in my next video so it was the complete formation of embryo sac or you can say it is the development of female gametophyte or the embryo sac thus the process of megasporogenesis is completed by the formation of embryo sac inside the ovule so it was all about the megasporogenesis or the development of female gametophyte i think the topic is clear to you 
still if you want to ask any question any query any suggestion you may ask in the comment section thanks for watching have a good day